Hello, welcome to my bookshelf, and today I'm super excited to share with you all my thoughts on Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I just finished this book, and I'm super excited to tell you all about it. If you're not familiar, Ready Player One takes place in the future, where virtual reality is a very commonplace thing. It's basically an escape from the world, and it's kind of this like video game world called the Oasis, and there's lots of different planets and territories, and just places that you can visit and travel to and level up and hang out with other people. It's kind of like the internet on this grand scale video game platform. It's very cool. But the main premise of the story is that one of the makers of the Oasis, James Holiday, he dies and he leaves a video well explaining this contest that he has set up. He's encoded these keys and gates within the oasis that if you collect all three of these keys and unlock the gates then you will become the owner of the oasis and get all of his trillion dollars so obviously the entire world is super excited and they all try to find these keys and unlock these gates so it's a very exciting premise and it just gets more and more exciting from there so that's kind of the main plot of the story, but another really important key thing to this book is the fact that James Holiday was a huge 80s fan because he grew up in the 80s. That's, that's when he was a teenager and that's when he made all of his most memorable memories. And so the 80s holds a very special place in his heart, even though this is set in the future. So 80s culture kind of comes back into like full swing because everyone is super excited about this contest. And so everyone is trying to read up in all this 80s culture so they can hopefully unlock the secrets to this contest and win. So it's a really cool mix of video games, 80s, and future. So one thing that would have made this book better right off the bat is if it wasn't 80s pop culture but rather 90s pop culture because I'm a 90s baby so I didn't get all the references in here directly, like I might have heard of some of it, but I've never, you know, played the video game or seen that movie. I might know, I knew that some of the stuff existed, some of the stuff I had never heard of before. So there was definitely a learning curve for me and it would have been a lot more enjoyable if I knew all the references. But that's not really a knock against the book, just something that I want to see coming next. So I want to see a Ready Player Two about the 90s, and I know I'm not the only one with that. I just, it would be so amazing. That needs to happen. So one of the awesome things about this book is all the creative things that Ernest Klein came up with, and a lot of these things I definitely want to see implemented in the real world, including the ability to be in your favorite fictional world, to actually be able to interact with it on a real level. It's kind of like theme parks but taken to a whole new extreme because right now I can't really see Hogwarts unless I go to Universal and even then it's not quite the same. So to be able to actually be in this virtual reality and actually to be in Hogwarts or Middle Earth or whatever fantasy world that I want to put myself in, I mean that would just be amazing. It's such a great idea and on top of that like this mentions you know, Quidditch. Like, you could actually play Quidditch for real. Like, fly on a broomstick, all of it. That needs to happen. That is so cool. So just that idea in and of itself is amazing, and I definitely want to see that happen in the future. Some other cool things. Um, it mentions that everyone is able to kind of more or less have their own TV channel is how I relate to it. Um, I think it's just called their video feed where you get to like program it to play whatever you want. Which is kind of like YouTube in a way where you get your own channel and you can put whatever you want on it. But with YouTube, you know, you have to make your own content. You can't just put up movies or TV shows that you like. That's not how it works. You can talk about those things but you can't just like throw it up there. You don't have the rights to do that. It's really cool in the Oasis that you have your own video feed that people can watch and you can put up any... TV show or movie that you love and enjoy and want other people to see and enjoy. And I love that idea and I would love to have my own like TV channel. I could program and I could like share with all my friends and it would just be really cool. So I want to see that happen as well. It also briefly mentioned interactive sitcoms which I have no idea what 
that means exactly. I don't know how you interact with your favorites that come, but that sounds interesting as well. I want to see that developed. Oh, another really cool thing is just the ability to go to school in the Oasis. Because, I mean, we have online schooling right now, but it's just not the same. You know, this, this school system in Oasis seems really cool and interesting. Another really cool thing that comes up in this book is the ability to be in your favorite movie. In the sense that you get to be the main character of the movie and say the lines that they say in that movie and interact with other characters and basically just star in your favorite movie, which is super cool. I mean, it's set up like a video game, so if you say the dialogue correctly, you get points. If you say it with the same kind of inflection as the original actor, you get even more points. There's a lot of bonuses for how many lines in a row you get right and things like that. It just sounds like a really cool and fun idea, and I definitely want to see that happen someday, so we need to get on that. There's a whole I mean, that's just like a snapshot of all the cool things in this universe and in the Oasis. And... Oh, it just sounds so cool. I mean, that's reason enough to read this book, but on top of it, one of my biggest excitements about this book is that it's really well written. Which seems kind of a weird thing to say, but I've been reading a lot of YA fiction. Okay, so with YA, what I find a lot of times is that the idea is really clever and really smart and really interesting, but the execution never lives up to my expectations. I feel like a lot of times the writing just isn't that good. It's just kind of mediocre. It's eh. But with this, I just thought it was really well written and it wasn't overly melodramatic in any way, which happens a lot when you read books about teenagers. It tends to be way over the top and everything's exaggerated and I don't know, maybe some people like that, but to me, I hate it so much. It just takes me out of the story and I just roll my eyes the whole time. I'm just not able to get lost in the story the same way that I did in this book. Which I'll kind of get to a little bit in my spoiler section, but we're not there yet. Another thing is just how, kind of going along with what I just said, how realistic the world is. Even though it's science fiction and we don't have the technology for any of this to happen yet, it all seems very realistic and honest in a way. It's more, it seems like this could actually happen given the fact that this oasis exists, if that makes sense. So I really appreciate that. It doesn't seem to take any huge jumps in logic to me. It all seems logical and well thought out and I really appreciate that. This does not feel like a first draft. And this feels like a well thought out product that's taken some time to really develop and again, I really appreciate that. I think those are all my thoughts about Ready Player One without spoiling anything, so I'm gonna start spoiling things, so as soon as I put down my book, we will get into spoiler zone. I think that's my new way of signaling to you when the spoilers are coming, so again, I gave this five stars because I just absolutely loved it, so you need to read this book. I, I just think it's fantastic, and even if you're like me and didn't grow up in the 80s, I think you can still appreciate it. Especially if you like video games at all, you will appreciate this. And just nerd culture in general, it's really good. So yeah, read this book, okay?